It's no doubt that when you're around grass, a speed worm is probably one of the most deadly worms ever invented. Any kind of cut tail worm that has this little split right there is just a phenomenal way to cover water and catch a lot of fish and specifically big fish. But there's things that you need to know when you rig it and how to fish it and little tips and tricks that are going to make you more efficient when you throw it that I never learned when I first started that I had to figure out the hard way. So stay tuned, we're gonna break all of that down right now. So there's a lot of things about a speed worm that you really need to know before you start throwing it. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is how you rig it. So the way I had it rigged in the thumbnail that you saw where I said don't do this is exactly that. When you look at a speed worm or any kind of cut tail worm for that matter, when you come down, there's one side that that cut tail is on. You wanna rig that with that side down. So you want to rig it with the cut down straight in line with your worm because what that does is that makes it so that worm swims straight and doesn't spiral going through the water because if it spirals it's going to twist your line which is going to make it weaker and you're going to lose fish. You have to change line and it is a whole mess that you really don't want to get into. So I'm going to take and I'm going to insert my hook just till it starts to bend right there. You can see that and I'm going to pull it in and then you can see it already falls over because I already had it rigged right once. Just like that. And then all I'm gonna do is you can see that cut tail is rigged on the same side as that hook. I'm just gonna line that up just like that so I know where to rig it. And then I'm gonna insert that baby right there. Pull it right out. That's a little bit on the other side. Right, right there. Just so it's text posed with that straight down. And now that worm is gonna swim through the water straight and that's not going to twist your line, you're going to get more bites that way because it's going to look more natural, it's going to come through cover better, and it's just going to all in turn fish a whole lot better. The key to this is it basically fishes like a southern version of a swim bait. This way you can fish this worm in grass, you can kill it, and still get the worm action out of it, but cover water as well with that thumping tail. We're out here on Okeechobee today, and I really want to break down how to throw this because it's a really key bait down here. So the next thing that I want to talk about is the weight. Now when you throw this you really want to peg that weight because if you don't peg that weight what's going to happen is if that weight is going to fall down and when you're trying to fish it in this grass it's going to make it harder because it's going to get caught up and it's not going to be as efficient. So I peg that weight and keep it in place. Now you can throw basically whatever size weight you want depending on the depth you need to fish it. I really like throwing a 3 16 or a quarter ounce weight that seems pretty pretty um, middle of the road right there for you. If, you. if you don't know what to start with, that's a good way to start with, because typically this bait is fished in four foot of water or less, typically. Now you can do a bunch of off the wall things with it, fish it deeper, fish it shallower, etc. The shallower you go, you might want to go to an eighth ounce weight if you're fishing up in like two foot or less, but for four, three to four foot or less, that three sixteenths, that quarter ounce weight is a really good way to start. So let's talk about the rod and the reel that I'm going to throw it on along with the line. I like 16 pound peen line tactical fluorocarbon. I'm either going to go 16 or I'm going to go 20. You can even go braid if you're fishing it around really heavy lily pads. That's not a bad option as well. Fishing like 30, 40 pound peen line TCB braid or whatever braid you prefer. I will only do that if I'm fishing around super, super thick cover. Though like I'm fishing in thick pads or I'm fishing around, you know, really, really thick shallow cover specifically where the line is not going to be as big of an option. But if I'm fishing around sparse cover like I have out here, I have isolated pencil reeds, cattails, etc., I'm going to go with that 16 pound uh, peen line tactical fluorocarbon. That fluorocarbon is just a great durability for going through all this grass. You still get the strength to pull it out, but then you still get the invisibility that they're not going to see it. I like to go with a 7 2 to 1 gear ratio reel. I'm a big Shimano guy. If you guys have been following on the channel, you guys know I'm a Shimano guy. And specifically, that 7 2 to 1 is to, for me to have more power to get that fish out of there. And because a 7 2 to 1 gear ratio reel is something that is a middle of the road, I can catch up with those fish if they eat it coming toward me. I have the pull power, but an 8 2 to 1 is just a little bit too fast, you know, when you're trying to swim that bait. Now, if you're fishing it with braid and you're fishing it super, super shallow and you really want to burn that bait, maybe an 8 2 to 1 would be better, but you're not going to get as much torque meaning pull power with that reel with an 8 2 to 1 gear ratio reel as you would with a 7 2 to 1. Now the rod that I throw it on, this is an Arc Essence, this is a 7 6 medium heavy fast. And I like that 7 6 because it's a longer rod which allows me to use my rod angle to keep that bait coming up through the water column or I can lower my rod tip to keep it going down a little bit more. It just depends on, you know, how deep the water is where I'm going to keep that rod angle. But that 7.6 also allows me that power when a fish eats it. I can jack him 
and get a lot of leverage on that fish to pull them up and out of that cover to get them where you're skipping them across the water as we've seen so many times when you hook a fish and you're trying to burn them back but with it being Florida and you know grass fishing in general there's always that possibility for giant fish and that's why that 7.6 uh, heavy action or medium heavy or heavy action rod really comes in handy because it's going to allow me to just have that pull power along with that 16 pound line. So let's talk about how to fish this bait specifically. So I think the best way to talk about it is to think of it in terms as fishing a swim bait. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to find isolated cover, I'm going to find thick grass, whatever I feel I can swim this bait through that I think I'm going to be around spawning fish or fish shallow in general. What this bait does is it covers water. So I'm gonna cast it out, and the way it was described to me is you fish it just like a swim bait or a spinner bait. So when I throw that out there, I'm just gonna keep reeling it. If I hit something, you know, I can pause it, I can twitch my rod tip if I get it bogged up, twitch it out of there. Anything you can do to try to trigger a bite, because in turn, you are fishing this bait just like you would fish a spinner bait. And so that meaning, you're gonna fish it around the same type of cover. And what really makes this bait excel for me is it's a great finesse way to cover water. You know, when you think about covering water, most oftentimes you think about a chatterbait, especially on grass. You think about a chatterbait, you think around a spinnerbait, you know, you think around about a whopper plopper, something big, something that covers a lot of water, that puts off a lot of flash, a lot of vibration, lipless baits. But what do you do when it gets really, really flat calm? A lot of times those fish shy away from eating that kind of stuff. You know, that a lot of times it's just too much. There's too much vibration. They can see it too well when it gets calm. And so a lot of times you have to try to downsize. Well, this is the in-between between having to flip a worm and throwing a chatterbait. This is that in-between where I can still cover a lot of water, but this bait doesn't have any vibration really. It doesn't have any, or it doesn't have any sound. It only has a very little bit of vibration. So it's a finesse way to cover water. And that's what I really, really, really love about it. You know, some of the main colors I go to if I'm down south, I like any of these plum June bug colors versus if I'm up north, I like more of the green pumpkin. You know, black and blue is also good down south, but green pumpkin, watermelon, red flake up north, those are going to be your primary options, you know. This June bug really doesn't start getting good until you get into this tannic color water. You know, down here in Florida, it's just that straight tea colored water, that Lipton tea color, that darker color water, and that's where that really, that color is really going to shine. So let's talk about some of the areas that I'm going to want to throw it. And we've talked about the rods, the reels, the bait, you know, how we're going to fish it. What I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for anything that I would typically throw a swim bait in, but that really doesn't cover it for you guys, right? So I'm going to look for sparse cover as far as reeds, lily pads, cattails, something that I can move this bait through pretty efficiently. It also works well in hydrilla, you know, that scatter, that shallow hydrilla that I can reel it over top of it or reel it down in it a little bit. It works really good for sparse lily pads. You know, the thick, thick lily pads is really hard to fish anything in um, other than a frog, but I will fish that in through sparser lily pads where I can reel it through. That might be a situation where I'm gonna go to braid though because I wanna be able to cut through that vegetation. Anytime you're around vegetation with a stalk, a lot of times it's better to go with braid. Um, you can get through some of these cattails. That's, that's, that's a gray area. But the pencil reeds, the Kissimmee grass, you can get away with fishing fluorocarbon, you know, hydrilla, the eelgrass, that's a great example of a fish or, um, fluorocarbon. But once you start getting into thicker cattails, thicker lily pads, you really want to go to braid. But those are going to be the areas that I'm going to fish it in. When I'm looking for those fish up shallower where I think they're going to spawn, anytime I'm around that sparse cover because I can reel it to try to cover water and hit something that I can't see with my eyes, that's a great example. You know, when you're in a bay and you see some scattered pencil reeds, you know, some pencil reeds, some hydri there's some hydrilla, there's some cattails. When I make a cast at an isolated target, I can worm it, and then I can also reel it back nice and casual to try to hit something on the way back that those fish might be setting up on that I can't see. So that's a great example for it. It works really, really well when you get out into large pencil grass fields, you know, that Kissimmee grass, sparse uh, lily pads like I had talked about where I want to cover water to try to find that sweet spot, but the only way to find that sweet spot is to cover water. And like I said, it really shines when it is sunny and there's a little bit of wind, but it's just that in-between bait that really allows you to cover water when it's not ideal conditions for a chatterbait. So don't slack on this bait. This is a sleeper bait that nobody fishes up north, but it excels instrumentally down south. You know, that speed worm is a phenomenal bait. If you guys like this video, be sure to check out this video where I talk about what I wish somebody would have told me about fishing a mag draft. 
That video has been doing super well. You guys really responded well to that video, so I recommend you guys check that out. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. You know, we got videos coming out every Tuesday and Thursday, but other than that, God bless y'all. You know, I hope you guys turn to God like I have and uh, just have a blessed day.